Hello, this is William Evans, and I am presenting new data on the effects of fortitropin on the rate of muscle protein synthesis in men and women. This is a randomized, double-blind, controlled experiment. As an introduction, fortitropin is an all-natural proteolipid complex made from fertilized egg yolk and has been demonstrated to lower circulating myostatin levels. In young men, fortitropin supplementation has been shown to increase lean body mass compared to placebo. It's also been shown to decrease ubiquitin expression and increase mTOR signaling in skeletal muscle. The purpose of this experiment was to examine the effects of 21 days of fortitropin supplementation on the rate of muscle protein synthesis in healthy older men and women. We tested the hypothesis that compared to placebo control, fortitropin supplementation will result in an increase in the fractional rate of muscle protein synthesis. So we use a method by which the use of heavy water can label uh, non-essential amino acids during synthesis. And this, uh, um, um, graphic demonstration here demonstrates that the deuterium on heavy water exchanges with the hydrogen during synthesis. And this is an example of the synthesis of alanine. So uh, during the synthesis of this non-essential amino acid, you can see that potentially there are four hydrogens that can be replaced with deuterium. And then once labeled, the non-essential amino acid is then um, incorporated into the synthesis of new proteins. This allows for the natural label of newly synthesized proteins throughout the body and potentially um, allows us to examine the rate of incorporation of these labeled non-essential amino acids to measure the rate of muscle protein synthesis. So typically for um, the use of heavy water labeling, the subject simply has to drink a small amount of heavy water. And in this way, we can measure for the short term or longer term, it really depends on the rate of turnover of proteins of interest. For skeletal muscles, because they're relatively slow in turning over, we recommend about two weeks or more uh, so that the incorporation of the label into newly synthesized muscle proteins can be detected. We then uh, collect the sample, and in this case, muscle was collected. Blood can also be um, measured, and we can measure the rate of synthesis of newly synthesized proteins that may be secreted into, into the circulation. We can uh, isolate the molecule of interest. We perform a mass spec analysis of the sample. Then we apply informatic software to calculate flux rates and analyze the data to generate functional kinetic results. The rate of protein synthesis may be measured over hours, days, or weeks, depending upon the sampling time. This is a representation of that. In, in the first case, subject drinks heavy water, um, after a period of time, we uh, sample the tissue of interest, um, and, um, and then we um, um, uh, isolate the peptides uh, after fragmentation of the protein, and then analyze it by mass uh, spec. And we look at the distribution of where the label is in each of these peptide fragments 
and then we can apply um, our, our software to uh, examine which specific proteins ha have been synthesized. In this way, we can measure the rate of synthesis of different ontologies of muscle proteins. And you can see here, it's possible once we have a, a muscle sample, we can measure the rate of synthesis of mitochondria, uh, myofibril, myofibrillar proteins, Z-band, contractile proteins, nuclear proteins, extracellular matrix proteins, um, a muscular uh, proteins in, involved in muscular dystrophy, and cytosolic proteins, as you can see here. In this study, we used heavy water to measure the rate of synthesis of multiple proteins, muscle protein ontologies in 10 men and 10 women, average age of 66.4 years. All subjects received 30 milligrams of D3 creatine prior to submitting a fasting urine sample to determine muscle mass at baseline. The subjects were randomly assigned to fortitropin supplementation or placebo. In this case, a cheese powder placebo was used to match the um, uh, macronutrient um, content of fortitropin for the 21-day duration of the study. On days one, two, three, and four, subjects ingested 50 mLs of 70% heavy water TID followed by BID ingestion for 17 days. In this way, we can uh, increase the enrichment of, of water rapidly <clears throat> and then maintain the enrichment of water during the period of time of interest. Saliva samples were collected to determine body heavy water uh, enrichment on study days 4, 7, 14, and 21. Blood samples were collected on days one and 22 for determination of circulating myostatin levels. On day 21, a muscle microbiopsy, which was about 10 milligrams in size, was taken from the vestus lateralis and rapidly frozen. In-solution digestion with trypsin was performed on SDS-soluble proteins prior to LCMSMS analysis using 27-minute gradient runs Fractional synthesis for each subject was calculated with average body water used as the precursor enrichment. Statistical analyses were performed for the multiple groups of proteins by the t-test with the benjamini hochberg correction for multiple comparisons, as well as the binomial test on magnitude of change for gene ontological groups of myofibrillar, cytoplasmic, and mitochondrial proteins. This uh, um, is a, shows the scheme of the study. And you can see, again, we, we gave each subject D3 creatine uh, and then later collected a urine sample. So we had baseline muscle mass values. During the period of time, you can see with this red line, heavy water was administered to each subject. And during the intervention period, subjects received either the fortitropin supplementation or the placebo. And you can see that saliva was collected, urine was collected, muscle was collected, and then on day 21, the muscle biopsy was taken. And uh, these are the data for the body water enrichments. And, uh, and you can see these are the individual values at the top and at the bottom of the saliva body water uh, average values. Importantly, there were no difference between a placebo and fortitropin, which we did not expect. But importantly, you can see by day four, body water enrichments were, were about 1% of total. And you can see that it was fairly stable during the 21 day period. And this allows us to to determine and use the body water enrichments for the calculation of muscle protein synthesis. Importantly, the measures of muscle protein synthesis that we measured were for the entire period uh, of labeling. It wasn't a single time. The 21-day biopsy actually is an average of the rate of synthesis of, newly, of new proteins over that 21-day period. 
These are um, the fractional synthesis rates of 38 myofibrillar proteins in control and fortitropin groups. And this is the only slide that I'll show like this, because what you can see is the cheese powder or placebo uh, for each of these individual proteins. And, and you can see, for example, this is Titan, myosin 7. There are a number of different myofibrillar proteins. But what you can see is that the blue represents placebo, the fortitropin represents the, the fortitropin supplementation, and for almost every single protein, you can see that fortitropin rates of synthesis were greater. What I'll show you from now on are the, essentially the differences of myofibrillar protein fractional synthesis rates compared to uh, fortitropin. So that, for example, um, all of these proteins, uh, for all of these proteins, there was a greater rate of synthesis on day 21 for the fortitropin supplements compared to placebo. And in fact, for 33 of 38 proteins, we saw a greater rate of synthesis in the fortitropin group compared to control. The mean magnitude of the difference was 14%. And as you can see, that for the proportion of increased uh, proteins using a, a two-tailed binomial test, um, um, the, the, the uh, value it was uh, sig highly significant. These are the data for the cytoplasmic proteins. So the, again, the cytoplasmic protein fractional synthetic rate increase for 36 of 44 proteins in the fortitropin group compared to control. The mean magnitude of difference was 13%. And again, you can see that overall, there was a, a, a fairly strong signal from the fortitropin group. Um, and, and again, uh, for 36 out of 44 proteins, there was an increased FSR, um, and this was highly significant. And this is uh, showing the mitochondrial protein fractional synthetic rate increase for 15 of 19 proteins in the fortitropin group compared to control. The mean magnitude of difference was 18%, and this was highly statistically significant. So in summary, saliva body water enrichments reached a plateau of about 1.5% as expected for this labeling pro protocol. There were no effects of fortitropin on circulating myostatin levels. Um, there was a significant relationship between uh, 21 uh, circulating myostatin, between day 21 circulating myostatin and average protein uh, FSR with an R of 0.5327. Um, we're not exactly sure what the significance of this is, because it kind of goes in the opposite direction that you would think it may also tell us something about the fact that circulating myostatin proteins may not be the entire story. But the fractional synthetic date, uh, synthesis data includes myofibrillar, cytoplasmic, mitochondrial, extracellular matrix, endoplasmic reticulum, membrane, and nuclear proteins. Treatment with fortitropin did not produce a statistically significant increase uh, in the fractional synthesis rate of any individual protein. And, and that's really because of multiple comparisons. Um, a a t-test for comparison after correction for multiple uh, comparisons is, is really shows uh, uh, no individual um, uh, values were statistically significant. But the average fractional synthesis for a majority of the proteins in several gene ontologies was higher in the fortitropin group. As I said, 33 out of 38 for myofibrillar proteins, 36 out of 44 for cytoplasmic proteins, and 15 out of 19 for mitochondrial proteins. This proportion was statistically significant. The overall magnitude of increase was 15%, demonstrating a stimulatory effect of fortitropin on muscle protein synthesis rates. Fortitropin effects were independent of gender or baseline muscle mass of the subjects. So in conclusion, 
daily intake of fortitropin resulted in a consistent 21-day increase in the rate of muscle protein synthesis. This was true of myofibrillar or contractile proteins, sarcoplasmic and mitochondrial proteins. The data suggests that fortitropin is an anabolic agent to counter the effects of sarcopenia in older men and women. And uh, obviously, data is needed on the long-term effects on muscle mass, strength, and functional capacity. But these data are highly indicative that fortitropin has a significant stimulatory effect on the rate of synthesis of muscle proteins. Thank you very much.